How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back to get another review. A little bit of, uh, yeah, wild, funky beer, I assume. We'll read about it on the side in the form of Fox Farm Brewing's It's their Zena. It's a beer to meal with honey, lemon peel, and rosemary. Um, this comes courtesy of Max. Thank you very much, Max. He, uh, 2X Max, mind you. Uh, he dropped off or mailed a huge box of crazy uh, New England jams. And this is one of them that I've actually been sitting on. It's been over a month, I think, since I received that box. And I'm just waiting for a good time to open this up. And tonight's the night. So here we go. Uh, what does it say here? It says, for our take on beer to meal, uh, we opted for a simple grist, so locally grown uh, in malted grains and a bunch of wildflower honey um, from Hearthstone Hill Apiary. Uh, fresh lemon peel and careful addition of rosemary from Cold Spring Farm. Follow a period of aging in oak in an oak fodder, uh, we bottle condition just using another edition of local honey. Uh, prepare with an eye towards warm weather and warmer welcomes. Um, it's 6.3 percent alcohol by volume, and it's pretty much done and done. Fox Farm, not my first Fox Farm beer, but it's my first 750 from these guys. Uh, you know, green bottle, um, relatively clear beer, looks the part of a nice warm summer chugger let's give this a whirl it says batch one two january 2019 so you're talking about a beer that has you know now being uh a bit over well eight months on her essentially this is the, i think the 10th or 11th of august so she should be drinking pretty damn perfect to be perfectly honest with you um explosive just wanted to jump out of the bottle that's why i had to give it a kind of a quick pour there but i mean look I mean, she looks like a new school kind of hazy pale ale. Uh, and it's, you know what's weird? I should really not say that. I should say all these new school hazy pale ales kind of look like old school Saison. That's really what I should say. But no one would get that. So, I mean, that's what you have going on there. I mean, just a rich golden hue. Just over a pinky finger of white as white could be with a little bit of pillow and rocky mixed together head. Super tight compact bubbles. I mean, she looks pretty. Pretty is the name of the game here. Pretty is what you want in these kind of beers. Um, we'll see what she has. Now, beer to meal. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, I kind of know, but I don't, and I forget what it is, but somebody told me, and then I forgot again, because that's how I do. So we're just going to dive into it almost blankly. So you're talking about wildflower honey and a couple other bits and pieces. Let's see what the nose has. Oh. Wow, that's pretty. Wow, that honey really does come through in multiple levels, too. It has a sweet dryness to it, a little bit of kind of jumbo shrimp action going on, but this sweet dryness. Now, honey has a sweetness to it. A lot of times I get this kind of flabby, fatty kind of thing when it comes to honey, but not. I'm not getting that here. I'm getting, like, an extra pop of that honey. Now, they said they kind of bottle conditioned it and, and used honey to kind of reactivate it. That could be the case here, but she smells beautiful and not an overly rich, overly sweetened way. I mean... That's kind of how natural honey kind of works. A lot of people think of overly sweet when it comes to honey, but the honey isn't really, real honey isn't really that sweet. There's a soft kind of, there's a soft herbalness to it. A tart herbalness. What are they saying here? I get in lavender. They're saying rosemary. Okay, I'm getting like that makes sense. I can I sometimes I confuse that stuff, but I'm getting like this nice soft kind of lavender. Um, not necessarily all the way kind of fresh floral, but a little bit kind of herbally spicy kind of floralness, and there's soft tartness in there that's quite nice. Like a peach pittiness, a peach pit, peach skinniness in there too, and a very 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 soft gentle kind of waft. A vanilla kind of floating around there. It smells pretty. It smells fantastic. I think I took a heartburn pill, so I'm going to dive right in. Cheers. Okay. Quite a bit more acidic than I thought it was going to be based off of the nose. The acidic portion of the show, it's not like a like a lacto super bile, like over the top kind of enamel ripping acidic. But it has this kind of aggressiveness to it that is, is almost like um imagine if like an acid was a bubble and that and then you swallowed foam to where you get in these uh, kind of pops and pricklies of acidity but then it drops out pretty quickly and goes away the way foam kind of dissipates very relatively quickly that's the way the kind of acidity kind of plays in this it's actually quite interesting i haven't had a beer kind of play like that acidity wise you get that honey you get those botanicals. You get a soft, now more of a white wine thing. I was talking about kind of a peach skin, peach pittiness. It's more of a white wine thing. Soft, dry oakiness. Soft dryness from the east. And the acidity has now 
tampered itself a little bit. Each sip probably getting a little less acidity. Heartburn might prove differently there. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, looking at it, describing it, I, I, pretty was the name of the game. Here we're getting something beyond that. It's a pretty beer, but there's some kind of, there's an attitude to it. There's a little bit of aggressiveness to it in a, in a, in a gentle way and not like a super heavy handed kind of way. Yeah, it reminds me of something I can't put my finger on. Almost like a, like almost like a, um, like a, a like a mixed cocktail made with bitters and lemon peel. That's the way it's coming off the morning now. So, I mean, listen, I went from peat skin to uh, vinousness. Now I'm going to like a kind of uh, a bitters and a lemon peel thing. So this thing is running a game in a flavor. So it's actually jumping all over the place. Kind of excites me. Um, it's not a super gentle, super soft, not super um, in tune with the body thing. And when I drink about, uh, drink about. I should, I've said that a couple times. I should coin that. When I talk about beer, sometimes I, I go gaga for this for this pH balance that it has. Um, you know, Swords is known to do that. There's some other breweries that are known to really nail that. To where when you drink it, it doesn't feel like you're really drinking anything. It just belongs inside of you. I love that. This is kind of the opposite of the spectrum. It's not super harsh, super caustic, but it's letting you know it's there, but it's equally as enjoyable as that because of how it's done. The acidity is is giving you enough to kind of turn you on, but at the same time, not giving you too much to turn you off. The volume's loud enough to be enjoyable, but not too loud for the neighbors to go kind of kicking down on the ceiling on top of you. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful aggressive acidity that stops short of being anything really really powerful again like i said running that peat skin venisonous lemon thing lemon grass more than lemon soft dryness yeast and oak playing well there a little bit of touch of soft vanilla and those botanicals kind of bobbing and weaving throughout the whole thing it's pretty damn nice i think this is a really fun beer I, I covered it. I mean, I'm not going to say anything else. If I sat here for another 20 minutes, I'll probably pull up 19 different adjectives, but you get the the gist of your, you're talking about a slightly acidic, uh, sprightly beer that has a decent impact and a level of drinkability that you rarely see in a lot of beers. Is it one of the better kind of wild, funky, sour beers that I've had as of late? It's definitely up there. It's not number one because I do, I, I do prefer that kind of belongs inside of you kind of thing going on with the pH bounce. While the acidity is higher than what I typically like in this beer, it doesn't show that way. It doesn't play that way. So I really enjoy the kind of juxtaposition between like the way the botanicals and the softness and the, the prettiness of the beer plays with a little bit of soft aggressiveness. Again, it's not an aggressive beer, but it's just, it's just a, the level, the balance of all those things. Value and availability, no idea. Max set it off. Fox Farm, 750, Green Bottle, I have no idea. Brewery only, I assume, and leave you with, if you like what, will you like this beer? If you like sour beers, if you like tart beers, if you like funky beers, if you like mixed culture beers, if you're in that world and you dig a little bit of acidity, but a lot of these breweries go a little bit too heavy-handed, try to be a little bit more of a challenge beer, you want something that is a little bit gentler, something a little bit more, while really complex, uh, soft on the edges, but loud enough to be aggressive. Yeah, a lot of different angles we're going here if you like those things you'll like this beer there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed a review hopefully enjoying a pretty little beer right now hopefully see you next time cheers <laughs>